Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the first lesson of surf for beginners. Um, covering uh, surf, which is Arabic morphology. Um, so the first question we have to ask ourselves is, what is surf? Because before we study something, we have to know what you know we're about to study. So surf in English is best <coughs> is best translated as morphology, and not etymology. Um, and uh, there's a pretty detailed uh, discussion of that in a book um, called uh, From the Treasures of Arabic Morphology. And inshallah, by the time you watch this video, it should be available. A link to the book should be available to on my website. Um, and in English, um, morphology is translated as the patterns of word formation in a particular language, including inflection, derivation, in composition, according to dictionary.com. So, you know, why is surf important in the first place? Uh, surf is important because without surf, you can't really use any good dictionary, especially handsware, which is a really good Arabic to English dictionary. You can't use it without knowing surf. Now, why is surf so important? And, and, and you know, like, surf is a really unique thing uh, about the Arabic language which I'll sh show you um, inshallah um, so a lot of Arabic words come from three base letters and again they're left to right so kaf, ta, ba in this example each word uh, has uh, you know a meaning related to some uh, related to writing right so for example the verb kataba means he wrote katabna means we wrote Katib means writer. Maktab means place of writing. Kitab means a book or you know something that's written, right? A book is written. So in all these instances, you can see that there's these three letters are present, and it ha has a meaning related to uh, writing. So um, and, and really, you know, you can take any three letters and you can kind of you know put them plug them in and uh, you know like for, for example if you if you use seen jim and dal sajada maybe he prostrated you know or we prostrated etc inshallah as we learn more you know you you'll be able to use that so just by using but just by learning three new base letters you know um, inshallah so now mapping the Arabic language uh, well you know one thing I like uh, about classical Arabic books versus books like Medina Arabic or um, Arabica Muallim which has been translated into English as Arabic Tutor is that the classical books they give you a a nice map of the language in, in, in you know in your head while in Medina Arabic you know it goes all over the place and for me personally it was confusing um, so inshallah let's start um, any articulation that you make is called love right now, if the articulation is meaningless, it's muhmal. For example, the author Sheikh Hussein uses in his book is the word Pepsi. Pepsi before the creation of the drink Pepsi. If someone said Pepsi 300 years ago, it wouldn't. It would be meaningless, right? Muhmal. If the word ha or if the utterance has meaning, it's called maldu, and it could either be mufrad single or murakkab compound. And in mufrad, it can be an ism, fi'l, or harf. An ism is a word that has a meaning, you know, in an, like it has a meaning, that, uh, right? And it's not related to any tense, either past tense, present tense, or future tense. And fi'l is a, is a word or an action that's related to one of the three tenses, you know, past, present, or future. Harf, on the other hand, does not have a meaning, uh, you know, by itself, but it has to be connected to something to have a meaning. So it has to be connected to ism or fa'l. For example, uh, the word in or the word for, you know, there would be harf. And murakkab, if it's a f you know complete uh, thought or a complete sentence, it would be mufid. Incomplete would be ghair mufid.